Right, the subject of this video is going to be free gifts, should you include them when you ship an order of something handmade. I'm going to be throwing some of the little tumblers that I include as gifts and this is taken from a blog post that I wrote six or so months ago. Um, so if you want the condensed version of it, just read the blog post because that will give you the information faster. But I will be explaining the tumblers as well in this video while I throw them. So that's what this will add, but if you want to just read the blog post, that would be faster. And if you think that the, it sounds familiar, you might have already read the blog post, um, in which case I'm probably not adding a huge amount new here. So the blog post was inspired by an episode of Wheel Talk Podcast, which is linked in the blog post, um, talking about whether or not you include a free gift. Um, Becca and Ryan are less likely to than I am, but I do charge a little more for my pieces than they do. But after that episode, I posted something to my Instagram stories to see how many people included gifts and what sort of gifts they included, and just generally what the customer experience of getting a gift was. Um, I had an idea in my head of what kind of answers I was expecting when I asked it, and I was kind of surprised at the extent to which customer opinion was split. I was going into it thinking gifts, free gifts are almost universally a good thing um, and that everyone will be pleased to get them, but that is definitely not the case. Uh, and when you kind of dig into why people were saying that, it makes perfect sense and I agree with them. So, what am I defining as a gift for the purpose of this? Um, I went with anything that was included with an order that wasn't purchased and didn't serve a specific function that would like a required function. So packaging, obviously not a gift. Um, the thing that someone ordered, not a gift. And if you include something like a business card that had instructions on how to care for the item, or I include one on how to dispose of the packaging, um, I don't consider that to be a gift. But if you include something printed like a sticker or a business card that doesn't serve a purpose, for the, the purpose of the blog post, I was considering that a gift. And the reason is because it meets a lot of the criteria that make a, good, a gift good or bad. Um, the same will apply to something printed like a sticker or a postcard. Um, so while they're not necessarily what you would consider a gift, you should probably consider them the same sort of way that you would including something that you would consider a gift. So. There are arguments for and against including gifts. Um, I'll start with the arguments for including a gift. And it, the kind of fundamental point is what the gift would be demonstrating. So as a maker and as a potter, someone producing pieces which functionally are very similar to something you could buy in IKEA for a fraction of the price, um, the fact that someone has chosen to buy a piece from me rather than going to Ikea is kind of a big deal. It's the only reason I can keep going as a business and it is a big decision for a lot of people and I appreciate it. And a lot of the people buying from me will follow me on social media and it's not just a here's a mug and it's worth the money, it's here's someone who's doing some work that I appreciate and who I want to support. So the reason that you might include a gift is because you want a way to demonstrate the appreciation of that customer. Um, they've purchased something, the purchase is a business tracks and transaction. Um, they've paid an amount for a product and obviously it's your job as a retailer to make sure they get that product and it's as described. 
but you might want to go above and beyond and include something else because at the end of the day you do appreciate the fact that they've purchased from you and I do so that's a good reason for including something yeah, that's kind of the fundamental reason for including something um, another well a benefit of including a gift and a reason why you might want to consider including a gift is it makes good use of a, an idea that I'm going to return to a few times in this which is the difference between something's cost and its value to the customer so just talking about these for example um, the cost to me is not that great these are thrown with about 150 grams of reclaimed clay um, and all told I estimate that they cost me around 25 to 50p depending on the size depending on the glaze but once they're fired the material and firing costs are about well, it's a fraction of a pound and the fraction of that pound will change based on a few different factors like how much I'm paying for my materials how big the, the gift is and how much kiln space it displaces but um, generally speaking around that sort of idea like say it was 50p now if I was selling these um, as a standalone item I'd probably charge something like 10 pounds but if I was wholesaling them I'd be happy well, actually I don't know that I would but you know five pounds might be a, a price that someone would be perfectly happy to pay for something like this uh, I think in my case I'd like to think that people buying from me would value it a little bit higher than that but it's that sort of kind of ballpark you'd expect something like this to be valued by the customer at a multiple of its cost to me and they don't take me much time uh, if I'm not talking I can throw them a little bit faster than this but generally speaking it's about a little over a minute to throw one less than that to trim one because all I do is round the edges trim out from the middle and burnish and I'll probably have a video of that that I'll overlap here so you can see what I mean so all told I reckon including glazing they might take three to five minutes and 50 p's worth of materials and firing costs and would be valued by the customer at a multiple of that I'd like to think, think something in the region of 10 to 20 times that cost um, so you're giving a gift to someone that they perceive its value to be significantly higher than its cost to you so everyone wins it hasn't cost you much it's worth a lot to them they're happy you're happy uh, another reason you might want to include a gift and that doesn't really relate so much to pottery is as promotion so if you have another product if you're for example selling tea or chocolate or soap or something like that where you've got different flavors and you can include a little consumable sample of a different flavor you might well be that might well lead to future orders of that thing so you're giving a gift but it is a gift that might well pay for itself in future orders which is good promotion as well as um, valued as a gift even if it's not even if it doesn't relate to further orders so probably worth doing I don't know if you can hear this but it's chucking it down outside I hope, you, I hope this is filtering into the background I kind of love love being in a room that's sort of exposed to the rain and the studio yeah, it's a, it doesn't have anything above it so the whole roof is being absolutely pelted um, and the final reason that you might want to consider adding something extra to a box that wasn't purchased and wasn't explicitly included in the listing is that for a lot of people a large part of why they purchase handmade is 
the experience of the whole process, buying and unboxing. And making the unboxing process more special improves the, the whole experience of the thing. Um, and if you know exactly what you're getting in a box and you get exactly that, you've, you've had a certain experience. But if opening a box gives you a surprise and there's something welcome and unexpected, um, that is a bit different and for most people, well, as long as it's a wanted surprise, then that adds to the whole experience. So you are improving the customer experience, again, making use of that differential between the rain heard me that differential between cost and value and you're making the experience better without costing you too much now those are the factors when the gift is appreciated the reason the gifts might not be appreciated are I really hope you're getting this sound. Not allowed to edit all of these bits out, and this mic might be too good at filtering out background noise. It would be a shame. The reason you might not want to include gift, the first one, the kind of main one, is that there is a cost. And while I've talked about how that cost, hopefully, is significantly below the value that the customer would place on the thing that's included, there is a cost. So these cost me a few minutes and 50p's worth of material. That has to be factored into the prices at some level. Now, obviously, there's an extent to which I could be charging less to my, for my mugs and not including these, or as these aren't explicitly in the listing, I could charge the same amount for my mugs, not include these, and I would make more money. So depending on which way you look at it, one of the two people in the transaction has to bear the cost of the thing. Um, but ultimately, you're either making less profit or you're overcharging your customer, potentially, for a thing that they don't want. And some customers, particularly if the cost of the item has been a stretch, feel like they have been overcharged if there is clearly a charge that has gone to something that they didn't want. And that is absolutely fair enough. Again, it comes back to the difference in cost and value where I include these because I know I, I allow enough time that I can include these and I wouldn't want to charge less for the main piece, um, even if I didn't include these, because these have a separate value to me um, in that I use them for glaze tests. So I'm making these anyway, and the cost of the main piece represents how much work that piece takes, how much the kiln it displaces, how many of them I can produce a month, my failure rate and how off, how like, how many times I have to redo a piece or pieces a month uh, because they don't meet my standards and as I get better my standards improve so the failure rate doesn't decrease particularly um, all of those factor into the price oh and I include a bit of shipping in my price because I offer free UK shipping so all of those are the cost of the mug and I know that the mug wouldn't be much less money. Well, I wouldn't charge less for the mug if I wasn't including this. It's 50p's worth of material. I wouldn't make the mugs 50p cheaper if I didn't include them. So it's not exactly that it, the customer has a choice of not having the thing and getting proportionately less, um, or it costing proportionately less. Because obviously these represent an amount of work and an amount of material but the cost of a mug is largely due to other factors not those that factors in but it's it wouldn't reduce the price that much so 
the feeling that a customer has of that cost being borne by them and it being an unwanted cost is one good reason that you wouldn't include a gift um, and one reason why customers might be sensitive and not appreciate gifts. Now, another part of the cost is the environmental cost. So someone has to dispose of a gift that's unwanted and that is going to be felt more keenly if the if it's made of a material that's not recyclable or it's a thing that's difficult to dispose of uh, or it feels costly or any of these things if the customer doesn't want it and now has the burden of getting rid of something um, that is a negative overall and definitely uh, does not add to the whole purchasing experience so yeah there's the environmental cost and the the difficulty of disposal both of which factor into uh, an unwanted gift being actually a negative overall so in those cases the whole order would be less appreciated someone would feel worse about a purchase because of the free gift so it's not just neutral it actually detracts and then the fourth point that people made and I don't completely relate to this one so I might not do the argument justice but was that it doesn't the, it doesn't respect the thought process that went into the order necessarily so if you've ordered something in a certain style and someone gifts you an additional thing that doesn't match it and is contrary to your tastes you feel like the effort that went into considering the piece that you purchased wasn't valued that the that you put a lot of thought in and somehow that um, a gift that isn't in that style detracts from it now I struggle with that one a bit more like I can sort of see that if it was a completely different thing or it was um, it ran contrary to like kind of some of your fundamental beliefs then absolutely something included in the box that, that genuinely made you unhappy um, would depreciate the perceived value of the piece you bought but I suppose I've never purchased something with so much consideration and from someone who has other pieces that I like so little that including one of them would be seen as a negative but for some people that is a factor and I can imagine that's more of the case for people with work that varies more than mine does um, but I'm, I'm not so sure about that one but anyway those are the reasons for and against and you can use those to look at what would make a gift more or less effective um, and so there's kind of a few broad categories of things the first one I touched on earlier is printed stuff printed material so there are many ways you can go with that business cards postcards stickers etc etc and a lot of people will include something like that now I have a business card in my box but that serves the purpose of telling you how to get rid of the packing peanuts <coughs> I have the biodegradable starch packing peanuts which I would highly recommend there's no reason not to use them over um, the polystyrene ones but some people might not realize that they're the starch ones and not the polystyrene ones and the starch ones the disposal for them there's a few different ways you can get rid of them but it's not necessarily what you'd think of if you weren't used to it in that they can go down the sink they dissolve in water and they're basically food so they dissolve and can be washed away or they can be composted or anything like that they can go in food waste etc etc so i have a card that explains that and you know says about i've got 
paper tape rather than plastic tape on the outside so the box can go straight in the recycling, stuff like that. So I don't include, I don't consider that to be a gift because it's serving a function. If it didn't have that information on it and it was just a business card that had my name on it and my contact details, then I would say that meet, that kind of fits with all the other aspects of including a gift. It's a, an unrequested, unspecified thing that has a cost and you're hoping it somehow provides value in some respects. So in this case, it would be kind of promotional, I suppose, but I'm, I'm not so sure. Postcards and stickers more so. They're kind of more clear cut. They are a thing for your customer to use and you hope, appreciate that has your branding on. So it's promotional and it's a gift and you're hoping that the customer values it. Um, the problem with them is they cost money and they're not that cheap. So you're not talking about a huge amount of money, but a postcard might cost you something in the region of 25 to 50p. So the same as this. Now, I don't know that many people that, well, maybe people do use the postcards. I have received far more postcards than I've used. So I have recycled quite a few and kept the nice ones, but I don't actually ever end up using them for anything. Um, so I don't personally value them. There probably are people that do, and in that case, it would be a, a good thing. But they have a cost that has to be paid for. If they go straight in the recycling, then it's cost someone, you know, 25, 50p, and it hasn't been uh, appreciated. Same goes for stickers, same goes for business cards. Particularly if any of these are laminated so they can't be recycled or anything like that. You know, it's a, it potentially doesn't add much value and it does have a cost, both environmental and monetary, that has to be paid by someone and that had to be disposed of. So I'm not a huge fan of printed things that don't um, serve a purpose, but I'm sure they work for some people. Now I mentioned before the, the idea of kind of a promotional gift it doesn't work so well for pottery, but if you include, if you sell something consumable, um, then you might want to include a sample of a different thing. Um, that seems like a very sensible idea to me. If I had a business that, where that made, I could produce something like that, I probably would do that. Um, it doesn't really make sense for pottery, uh, other than I suppose I could be including these in a different glaze in the hope that someone would then buy that glaze. Um, following on from that, you can do the same thing, the something consumable, uh, even if you don't uh, produce in an industry of uh, kind of that produces them. There was a, a trend, seems to have died out a bit now, but about a decade ago, almost everything I bought online came with a packet of Haribo in. And obviously someone was selling these cheap and you get the little bags of sweets. And almost everything you'd order would just come with those chucked in. And the first few times you kind of thought, oh, this is fun. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of Haribo, but I'd eat free Haribo. But after a few times, you know, I, I didn't particularly want them. And the problem with including a an edible thing that you don't produce is that you're paying someone else's profits. The same as buying printed stuff. If you're paying another company to produce it for you, they are making profit on that sale and you are paying for them to make profit. Whereas if it's something you produce yourself, you can do it at cost. The cost to you is the cost. If you buy it from someone else, the cost to you is the cost plus their profit. So you're always gonna get a worse cost to value ratio 
on something you don't produce yourself because you're paying for someone else. You're paying their rent. So um, I don't, and also the, the other problem with consumable things is that um, it's going to be personal taste of the customer whether or not that thing is appreciated and if they haven't explicitly ordered something in that vein it might not be appreciated that said i do actually include tea samples with my uk mug orders generally speaking because um i get them from nudity who i've collaborated with with a mug and tea strainer set before and i buy tea from them all the time and they're great people i'll link them in the description josh and sophie and they do fantastic blends of tea and I would highly recommend everything they produce particularly the decaffeinated ones after 8.30 uh, the butterscotch is fantastic and there's a new Christmas special this year which is great too called Yule Nog um, but the point there is that I'm not adding it necessarily to promote me or for my customers to value it I'm including them because I want to promote nudity and um, and if you can find a company like that that align with your values that you genuinely rate their product and you think your customers would appreciate and either you can work out uh, some sort of a deal where you're not paying retail prices or you get it for free to include which is worth it to, as long as it is a company that um, your customer base and your values align on, chances are that company will be interested in it as well. You can sort out a deal potentially where it doesn't cost you much and your customers might benefit from it. So there are times where that does make sense to me and I would do it and in fact do do it. Um, but outside of that, I would not purchase food to or something consumable to include unless it was a very good reason because of those reasons it's, it's not guaranteed to be appreciated and it doesn't have the best cost to value ratio um, and then the final thing you can include that is very financially and materially cheap um, not necessarily so cheap on time but I'm put wood in this. It's a problem with reclaim. Is a handwritten note. Going back to the, the kind of point I started on, the reason that we're doing this at all is as a demonstration of appreciation for the fact that customers purchase from us rather than someone else, and to strengthen the connection that they feel. Um, and a great way to do that is by just literally saying something to that effect, and. A handwritten note, especially when you're sending something out to a customer who's bought from you a few times and it's a name you recognise, that just a little note saying, you know, thanks for your continued support, or a longer note if you want, um, will go a long way and has probably the best cost to value of anything in terms of financial cost because. It doesn't really cost you anything to write the note other than time and however much value the customer gets out of that strengthened connection um, it's worth it on that basis so should you include a gift um, it entirely depends on what you're making what you're selling what gift you'd be including and whether or not it fits with the way you want to run your business, the sort of customers you have, and so on. There are a lot of factors and there's definitely no right answer. If it doesn't feel like a genuine thing that you want to do, then I wouldn't recommend it. If it does, you're looking for something that makes the best possible use out of the difference between the cost to you and the value to the customer. So something you produce is probably ideal because you'll have minimal costs other than your time um, and something that 
fits with the purchase that the customer has made will be the most appreciated. So it can be, you can vary the thing that you include based on the thing that was purchased. Um, but making sure it's something that will be valued and that doesn't cost you much is great. Making sure it's something that's easy to dispose of. So if it's paper, make sure it's easily recyclable. If, you know, basically just don't burden your customer with a difficult disposal process and don't make anyone who's, and hopefully more people are becoming so conscious about the environment, don't make them feel worse. So less plastic, more compostable um, or recyclable and so on and so forth. You know, you basically want to minimize the, the potential negatives, maximize the potential positives, and if you can make it work for you in terms of promotion at the same time, then that's uh, an added bonus. And what pieces I would recommend as a potter, you know, if you're in another uh, industry, you'll have to figure out what works for you, but I make a couple of different kinds of thing that I include as gifts, but the one that I make the most of, uh, by far, will be these tumblers. So somewhere between 100 and 200 grams of clay, generally around 150, which makes something that size, which is a nice usable thing. You can use it as a shot glass or for coffee, or a lot of people use them for storing small things. Um, we currently use one because I have a toddler for cowpole syringes which you accumulate a lot of when they start mingling with other toddlers because nurseries are plague factories. So these are perfect for something like cowpole syringes uh, but other people will find equally specific and niche uses that you didn't expect. Um, but the things I particularly love about these is they are fantastic for glaze tests. They are halfway between a test tile and a mug. So if a glaze looked promising on a test tile, I can dip one of these. Uh, if I get a container that's approximately that width, so only, well, I say that width, I mean just a fraction wider than this is, this will displace the volume. I can dip down in about 100 mil, so 100 gram batch, which is what I normally use as a glaze test amount. I can dip this in a very small amount of glaze and it will displace the volume and you'll get a full dipped test. So it will recreate the way that I would glaze a mug. Um, it's big enough and ha has enough characteristics that are similar to a mug in terms of kind of wall thickness and the rim and having something on the inside and the outside. You know, it it very closely approximates a mug, so any glaze results you get on something like this will pretty much carry over exactly to a mug, just scaled up slightly. <coughs> um, meaning that my the value to me of these is in the glaze testing. Even if I just threw them for the glaze testing and never did anything with them, just discarded them, they would still have provided the value to me um, just from that. But the fact that they can then be given to someone who might use them for something is a double win. So essentially I consider them to be free because I've, I've got my value out of at least the ones that I use for glaze tests. Um, they are the right size and shape to go inside a mug, which means that I don't have to take up any more space. I use the same size box for an order, including one of these, as not. And they barely use any extra packing material because the mug protects them. So all you've got to do is package them well enough that they don't rattle around inside the mug and potentially break either themselves or the mug. Um, but the however you normally pack a mug you can just tuck one of these inside and it doesn't cost you anything extra other than the increase in weight um, as I said they're very quick to make I use the clay scraps for this so 
I'm not opening a fresh bag. What I'm doing is every time I every time a piece fails, every time I'm extruding handles, there's always a little bit of waste clay. Um, and I just shove all of that clay into a, a different bag. And once the bag is full, I wedge up some of it and throw these. And it's a great use of the clay. The clay comes out slightly softer generally because the failed pieces have in, added some extra water. Um, and it's, you know, it makes it easier to throw these if the clay is soft. So it's a great use for that clay. Um, and saves me the bother of having to wedge it up really well, which I would want to do if I was throwing a larger mug. Um, these are more forgiving all round. Um, and yeah, the glaze tests, using up glaze, you know, that sort of thing. They, they have easily justified their, their work. Um, so, they're what I would recommend most of the time. Now, if someone's ordered bowls, I'll generally make this, a small bowl um, and I use those to test how glazes will look on bowl forms. They're done the same sort of way as my trinket bowls, but not necessarily with the patterns that those have. They'll just be a straight sided bowl and the bowls nest inside larger bowls. So that works perfectly in the same way with regards to packing. Um, so, all that would look like is, I mean, I'd normally do them on slightly larger bats if I was going to do one. Oh, and I should say, this is the Hartley and Noble um, Russian doll bat system, and I'm using the smallest inserts, and this would be a lot harder to do unless you're either throwing from the hump or have loads of space if you didn't have a bat system like this, because obviously each tile is so small on the smallest insert that I can throw I can't remember how many, I think it's 24 to a board with these, um, but anyway, it does make it easier, but I would normally go for a larger one for bowls just because um, they end up overhanging. But anyway, bowls the same sort of concept, you just pull outwards rather than up. And I would do something like that. Shape it with a rib, undercut it with triangle turning tool. In fact, I'm gonna use, uh, I need to sharpen or reshape mine and worn it out so it doesn't go to a point anymore. It goes to a, 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 a staggered point and you can't come in at this angle. Anyway, um, yeah, bowls are good for they're equally good for glaze tests for things of that shape and they nest inside bowls so bowls can make good sense and in a way they're kind of more useful to customers if i was going purely on practicality i'd probably go with these as the gift because it's the same amount of clay it's um a different amount of kiln displacement but you're trading height for width so you can fit fewer of them across a shelf but you can put them on a, a shorter shelf or get more shelves in either way they don't take up a huge amount of space and the final thing that I would suggest if it's smaller orders and you're looking for something quick is fridge magnets or pendants pendants are probably better if you want to do them as cheaply as possible because with fridge magnets you've got to buy the magnet and I think I pay something like 10p a magnet, which isn't nothing when you're buying hundreds of them. Um, but with those, I make a sort of coin sized disc of clay. I tend to use marbled clay, like different colors in, um, which I can do more easily because I'm slip casting them. I used to do them with just rolled out clay, in which case I'd use something like black clay, so it gave up gives a high contrast with the glaze. I'm currently slip casting them which makes them faster and more interesting and then I put a clear glaze over that. But it, that's a very small thing that you can include that again makes use of that cost value. If you do it as a pendant you're not including the magnet and it's just a disc with a hole in it. It basically costs you nothing. You're talking about a couple of grams of clay so 
the cost to you would probably be under a penny per one of those. Plus you can pack them in the kiln around other pieces. So they're not taking up any more space. Um, so if you're looking for something very quick that you can include with an order that's extra and it's a small order, you don't think you can justify the amount of material and time that something like this takes up, just get yourself a round cookie cutter that's sort of like an inch in diameter and I used two wooden chopsticks and a rolling pin to roll them out when I was doing it. You don't need a slab roller, um, in fact a slab roller would be overkill and I wouldn't bother unless you needed to. Just literally roll out a sheet of clay, use the cookie cutter to cut a bunch of discs uh, and then stamp your logo in it, assuming you have a logo stamp. But something like that you know it probably won't be valued that highly by that many customers but it will be valued to an extent and it doesn't really cost you much at all you can churn those out and as I said the material cost and the firing cost is negligible and they don't even add any weight to the shipping so there are quite a few options for pottery that are very cost effective and make sense in my opinion um, whether or not you feel they're suitable for you is a question that only you can answer um, but I feel that for the most part uh, including gift is a sensible idea just because it will be appreciated by the majority of people um, so long as you have been thoughtful and considered in what you include um, and it it works on the criteria that I discussed earlier most people will appreciate it and those that don't will probably still appreciate it to the extent of the cost because it's because of the gesture um, the majority of people who were anti-gift uh, in my Instagram stories when asked about it further were talking about <clears throat> specifically bad gifts so people who've included things that would that most of us would not want as a gift so it's not that they were anti a gift that you'd appreciate it's that they'd got bad gifts so, so long as you're not giving bad gifts it will probably be appreciated by almost all of your customers um, and my personal take on it is that it's worth the extra effort if you're doing something handmade because uh, ultimately uh, this business only survives because people feel enough of a connection that they want to purchase from me. So let me know your thoughts in the comments. And um, as I say, there's a blog post, I'll put all the links in the description um, and I will link to the infographic version of it on Instagram as well if you want the abridged version.